All right, today, ladies and gents, we're going to talk about how to draw buttons and nav bars. And this is going to be part of a, uh, a multi-part tutorial, probably about four parts on how to draw buttons and nav bars. Um, and we're going to talk about, uh, the, in the first one, we're going to talk about how to draw your own uh, custom buttons. Uh, in the second part, we'll talk about how to make a stretchy button, one that uh, extends, uh, expands and contracts as you... Uh, add or subtract uh, um, text to it, uh, on it. Um, we're going to talk about, in the third part, how to make a, a navbar using the navbar tool within uh, Zara. And in the fourth part, we're going to talk about how to make your own custom submenus. Um, the, uh, the navbars give you a, a very limited uh, um, control over what the way the submenus look, and uh, there's a way to draw your own. Um, now, these topics have been covered uh, individually many times by other people, but uh, they've never been uh, kind of holistically um, covered in, in, in one fell swoop. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and show you a couple things. So the first one, like I say, this, this uh, is um, how to draw your own, uh, your own buttons. Now, your buttons can be very simplistic. Uh, here I have just a, a rectangle with some text on it. Um, or they can be um, a, a bit more complex. Here I have um, a rounded rectangle um, with, a, with an elliptical fill, uh, another shape on top of that that's this highlight at the top, and a, a drop shadow, okay, and if I, uh, along with the, with the text. And if I go ahead and show you, um, these are both buttons, functioning buttons. Anytime I, I mouse over them, uh, you get the rollover effect here the same way. Um, again, very simplistic design or very complex design. It doesn't matter. It's uh, it's basically just a, a background and some text. Okay, and the, the background can be one shape or many shapes. Is what I'm trying to get across. So how do you do it? Um, it's very simplistic, and I'm going to go with this uh, with this um, regular button effect. And and again, you can go out to um, these website template themes, right, and go out and pick up, uh, I'm sure there's a button here, here's a, here's a stretch button, you can just grab one of these and bring it in, um, tell it to match, that's fine, um, and I can increase the size of this, you can just drag these in and, and match them to your colors of your website and stuff like that and use them, uh, and that's all well and good, but if you want more control over things and want to draw your own, uh, it's not that difficult to do. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm on this mouse over layer, or mouse off layer, excuse me, uh, and I'm going to draw a background. And again, I'm just going to draw a very simplistic uh, background. And right now, this is white, and I'll give it a, a, a blue color here. Hello, there we go. Uh, a rounded rectangle with, uh, with a blue color. Yeah? Uh, fairly straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and write some text over it. Now I've got this set up to be quite large, uh, and that's probably fine. I've got it set up to be centered, and you can uh, change it to be whatever you want. Uh, um, we'll go ahead and type button text for now. Yeah. Now if I didn't have this exactly centered, and I want to check to make sure it is anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control shift l to bring up this object alignment. And if it's not in the center, what you want to do is you want to click here in the center, and that's going to align centrally here and align centrally here and press apply. And that's going to move the text to the exact center of, uh, of the background. Okay? So once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have both of them selected again. I'm going to hit uh, Control G to group them. Now this is a group. Now I'm going to uh, type in Control C, and I'm going to go to my mouse over layer and select it. And then I'm going to press Control uh, Shift V to paste in place. Now, what that means is I've got I've got one here on this uh, mouse over layer and one here on uh, a mouse on the mouse. Sorry, one on the mouse off layer, one on the mouse over layer. Um, now, the one on the mouse over layer, I want to change a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a much lighter fill color. And if I wanted to, I could uh, also change the um, the text color. Uh, I might give it a, a black text. Uh, oh, whoops, sorry, I didn't have 
just the text line selected. If I want to uh, select just the text line, I can give it a black text color. Okay. Now, I've got a group on both. I'm going to go ahead and bold that up and select. Could drag select both groups, right, on the mouse over and on the mouse off. Now I'm going to press Control alt g to make this a soft group. Okay? Uh, two groups in a soft group on two layers. And what this does is it, uh, it basically groups the text so that if I make changes to uh, the text on one layer, it makes text uh, changes to the text on both layers. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the text on this, on this layer here, and I'm going to type in something else. So instead of button text, I'm going to type in big button. Yeah? And if I hide the mouse off layer, or sorry, the mouse over layer, you can see that when I, uh, when I see the, the mouse off layer, its text has changed. Both, both layers have changed to be, to be big button. All right, now the last thing that I need to do to make this a, an actual button is I'm going to select it. I've got both of them selected now, and go up to uh, Link Properties, and I need to give it some kind of link. Now, it doesn't have to be anything special, it just has to be something there. Uh, if you want it to actually link to something, you need to type in the, uh, the link, obviously, but it can be just as simple as the pound key. Uh, and if I press Apply for, for demonstration purposes, it can be the pound key. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and preview the current web page, and here you can see my two buttons from before and my big button that I just created. Anyway, that's how you create a button in Zara. I hope you found that interesting and useful, and uh, we'll see you back for part two.